British ships also made a monopoly on the transportation of captive African slaves that crossed the Atlantic to the Americas. Our ancestors were like, eh, 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 our wall is finishing, and they were running. White people, they came, they were like, eh, eh, why are you running? Society was transformed by technological advances and increasing mechanisation and would launch Britain to global dominance. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is your boy Shady Shay, the one and only guys, and we are back here again today on this beautiful day. <laughs> <laughs> yes guys so um a lot of you have been asking me why i rarely upload content about the uk on my channel guys okay guys this is about to change we are on phase three yeah shady shit youtube channel phase three all right uk here we come okay without saying too much guys i'm gonna jump on this right away we are gonna start from the history of britain the history from the beginning without saying too much guys let's go straight to action but first of all guys Shady, why are you aggressive? Okay, relax, Shady. But first of all, guys, go down quickly, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, give me some love, okay? Let's go straight to action. 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 <laughs> History of Britain. Great Britain. Let's go, guys. Let's do this. The I'm United ready. Kingdom is a nation located in the British Isles, mm -hmm. made up of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. Okay. Thousands of years ago, knowledge. the Isles were inhabited by long-forgotten pre-Celtic people, known as the Beaker Culture, the beaker culture. named for their distinctive pottery beakers. Little is known of them, but it has been suggested that these people laid the foundations for the mysterious Stonehenge. Oh yeah, they were the ones that laid the foundation for the Stonehenge. Now the Stonehenge, yeah, is, is such a massive structure made of big stones. I'm, I'm, I bet you guys know about it already. You know about this already. Yeah, the stones are so mighty, so gigantic, yeah. I think, yeah, them pre uh, pre celtic people must have been really big, strong and hench. Or they have some kind of technology that we never heard of. Yeah, for them to, to, to lay a structure like this. A series of heavy standing stones which were transported from 150, 150 miles, away miles and arranged to form a calendar, marking the days of the summer and winter solstice. 150 miles to get such large boulders just to, to, to make a calendar. Yeah, so they can tell the times, the days and things. But these days, like, we just go on Google, like, calendar? We find a calendar or oh, just freaking get a calendar from somewhere or just check your phones. Wow, they had it rough. They had it rough and tough back then, yeah? Over time, waves of Celtic-speaking people arrived from the European continent, okay. who soon came to form the Britonic, Gaelic and Pictish people. These people were not a unified people. No? But were rather many tribes who shared a similar pagan religion, language and culture. Ah, so they came the together. Invaded. They came together because of the similarity of their religion. And then the Romans conquering what's now England and Wales, but mm -hmm. failed to conquer the Pictish tribes to the north. Yeah, tough people. The Romans launched several campaigns into this land they called Caledonia. However, their fortifications were soon overrun and abandoned, and they retreated to Hadrian's Wall. Yeah, Hadrian's Wall. Yep. Their conquered lands were incorporated into the Roman Empire, becoming the province of Britannia. Hmm. They brought Roman customs and laws, improved infrastructure, and connected many towns and cities with Roman roads. When the Romans left, there was a great migration of Germanic tribes. Germanic? These were the Dukes, Germans? Angles, and Saxons, with their language Old English. Their settlement pushed many Britons to areas in Wales, Brittany, and a kingdom known as Dumnonia, Dumnonia. while Scotland eventually no, evolved into four kingdoms. Okay. The smallest of these were the Scots, who were originally from Ireland, the Britons of Strathclyde, the Anglo-Saxon Kingdom of Bernicia, and the Picts of Alba. You see, that's why Scottish, yeah, and Irish... I mean, I've always thought that there was some similarity. Like, first time I, I heard them speak, I was like, there's, there's some similarity between these two people. For unknown reasons, the Jutes disappeared from history, but the okay. Angles and Saxons eventually formed seven kingdoms. Wessex, Sussex, Kent, Essex, East Anglia, Mercia, and Bernicia became Northumbria. Okay. After the collapse of Dumnonia, mm -hmm. the remaining territory of Cornwall fought against the powerful kingdom of Wessex, 
Cornwall eventually fell under the control of Wessex, but it managed to keep its own culture. Okay. Wales at this point was also made up of several separate kingdoms, the largest being Gwynedd in the north, Powys in the east, Gwynedd. and Dufford to the south. The British Isles soon saw numerous Norse raiders from Scandinavia. Ah, These the Vikings! The Vikings came through! Yeah, they heard of something happening, they were like, they came through for a piece of the cake. Were the Vikings, and they began settlement on many of yeah. the Scottish Isles, the Isle of Man, and they even founded the city of Dublin in Ireland. The Scots and the Picts then decided to unite under Kenneth MacAlpine to form the Kingdom of Alba. Mm -hmm. The Kingdom of Alba grew strong over the years, and eventually Strathclyde was brought into the fold. Meanwhile, Danish Vikings arrived in the Anglo Saxon kingdoms for conquest. Yeah. After fighting the, the king Vikings. of Wessex, Alfred the Great, the Dane law was formed. A land where the laws of the Danes held influence over the Anglo Saxons, controlling the region and its affairs. Okay. The Anglo Saxons eventually defeated the last Viking king of York, Eric Bloodaxe, yeah, and Athelstan yeah. became the first king of the English. Although, the newly formed Kingdom of Denmark would conquer England and even found a short lived Danish dynasty under Canute. You see, back then, yeah, it was about a country that was stronger, about a country that could go in and conquer another country and take over their land. It was about the strength, about might. Conquer the country, take over everything. Like, take over it as well. Mad. The Norsemen had a dramatic impact on the Isles, so it's no wonder some words in the English language have Norse origin. Mm. After defeating formidable sea raiders from Ireland, the Western Isles, Scandinavia and Anglo-Saxon forces from Mercia, Griffith ap Llywelyn subdued his rivals in southwest Wales. Wow. Llywelyn became the only Welsh king ever to rule over the entire territory of Wales. What a he was king. defeated by the what English king. Earl Harold Godwinson and killed by his own men leading to the Welsh kingdoms splitting apart once more. Killed by his own men. At the death of Edward the Confessor, there was a succession dispute between four claimants. Okay. Harold Godwinson was elected as king, and managed to defend England from an invasion by the Norwegian king Harold Hardrada. However, Harold had to march his army south to defend against Duke William of Normandy, mm -hmm. who had crossed the English Channel. According to tradition, at the Battle of Hastings, Harold was killed oh, yeah, by an the arrow to the Hastings. eye, and the yeah, Norman yeah, invaders yeah. were victorious. The new King William defeated a number of rebellions, built a new design of castles called Moat and Baileys, okay. and introduced a number of reforms, like Trial by Combat and the Doomsday Book. Yeah, Trial by Combat. The Norman oh, dynasty invaded here. into South Wales and parts of Ireland, creating the Lordship of Ireland. At court, nobles spoke and conducted sessions in the Anglo-Norman language, which endured for centuries and left an incredible mark in development of modern English. Ah, so you see how the English language borrows lots of words from different countries, yeah? It didn't start today. It started from a long, long, long time ago, okay? From all the cultures and the languages and the different peoples that got uh, into um, the area known as Great Britain for conquered stayed back so obviously a lot of their cultures their ways of life their languages their experiences their technology was borrowed and made into a hybrid okay different ways of lives all coming together being all mixed up and shaken together like a cocktail you know what i mean like you know when you sh make a cocktail you shake up the thing you know the taste is really a bit different and really nicer hence the english language is what it is today after a brief civil war, Henry II would marry Eleanor of Aquitaine, okay. establishing the Angevin Empire, beginning a long rivalry against France. Mm -hmm. Richard the Lionheart defended much of this territory, and also became a central Christian commander during the Third Crusade, achieving considerable victories against his Muslim counterpart, Saladin. Under King John, heavy taxes were imposed on his barons in order to pay for his expensive foreign wars. Wow. The barons rebelled and forced John to sign the Magna Carta, the a Magna charter Carta. that established the principle that everyone was subject to the law, even the king, guaranteeing the rights of individuals, the right to justice, and the right to a fair trial. Mm -hmm. Almost like the beginning of democracy. Yeah, it's the that's the subtle way democracy started coming into play because before kings were not under any rule, under any law at all. The king is the king above the law. But then this Magna Carta started like you know reducing the powers and the uh, untouchableness <laughs> untouchability okay the invincibility of the kings 
most of North Wales remained independently ruled by several Welsh princes okay. until 1216, when Llywelyn the Great became the ruler of the Principality of Wales. This would be the case until Edward I, who conquered Wales in 1284, effectively becoming part of England. At the death of King Alexander III, Scotland was left with 14 rivals for succession. Whoa, to prevent 15. civil war, the Scottish magnates asked Edward I of England to elect a claimant. John Balliol was elected king, but was constantly undermined by Edward, who opposed Scottish independence. Okay. Edward decided to launch several campaigns to conquer Scotland and depose King John, to which he acquired the nickname Hammer of the Scots. See, everybody just wants a taste of power. Under a brave Scottish knight, William Wallace, the Scots mounted resistance against the English, defeating them at the Battle of Stirling Bridge. Edward marched north in person and defeated Wallace in battle, but Wallace managed to escape. He was later captured and executed, but his mm. efforts allowed Robert the Bruce to rise up and defeat the English, securing okay. Scottish independence. When the King of France died without an heir, Edward III was technically eligible to the crown through his mother. The French court denied his claim and instead installed Philip of Valois. Edward paid homage to Philip as he owned the lands of Gascony and was essentially a vassal to the King of France. Due to disagreements, Edward reasserted his claim to the throne and mm -hmm. invaded France beginning the Hundred Years' War. Okay, yeah, the Hundred Years' War. The English achieved notable victories at the Battle of Crecy, Poitiers and Agincourt thanks to the technical superiority of the longbow but was unable to conquer the French with the appearance of Joan of Arc, who lifted the French spirit and turned the tide of the war. Okay. Upon the death of Edward III, an entire generation was skipped in the line of succession, which prompted bitter rivalry between several claimants. Most notably were the Houses of York and Lancaster. Tensions were high until a bloody age of warfare erupted between these two factions in the Wars of the Roses. So much turmoil. It's so in-depth and complicated, this period will yeah. likely become a video of its own. Whoa. The wars ended with the arrival of the Tudor dynasty, Henry VIII wanting a divorce split with the church creating his own Church of England. Yeah, yeah, so this man is the one that made the Church of England, yeah, because um, I think he wanted to uh, divorce his wife, but he couldn't, okay, and uh, that led to him yeah, getting the church, breaking off from the main church and getting the Church of England. That's my, my layman knowledge. This ultimately led to a series of religious differences between future English monarchs. In between his six wives and naval adventures, Henry gave Wales representation in Parliament and created the Kingdom of Ireland, mm -hmm. but realistically he only controlled an area known as the Pale. In addition, Henry's paranoia and suspicion amounted to tens of thousands of executions, including his friends and wives. Yeah, yeah. During the 16th century, the largest and most powerful empire was Spain, under King Philip II. Oh yes, Spain England, was powerful. Under Elizabeth I remember I. back then. were helping Dutch rebels reject Not Spanish like rule, born. and many English privateers were also intercepting Spanish silver on its journey back from the New World. This angered the Spanish king, and the final straw came when Elizabeth had Mary, Queen of Scots, executed. Yeah. Because she did not want Scotland falling under Catholicism. The Spanish Armada, consisting of 130 ships, was deployed to invade England. At the Battle of Gravelines, an English victory forced the Spanish fleet to sail around the British Isles before storms in the north of Scotland destroyed yeah. the remaining Boom. ships. Yeah. In retaliation, the English led by Sir Francis Drake amassed their own armada to invade Spain, but this too became a failed endeavour. Born in this period, William Shakespeare became a renowned poet, playwright and actor who contributed significantly to English literature. Wow, wow, wow. You see... The amount of turmoil you see the amount amount of wars that had to be fought just for this country called great britain to be formed you see the amount of pain bro there was a lot of betrayal a lot of a lot of people had to die a lot of laws were changed reforms were made crazy man crazy 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 anyway let's continue guys i'm talking too much when Queen Elizabeth of England died without an heir, her closest male relative was James VI of Scotland. Mm -hmm. James was elected as King of England and Scotland in a personal union, although the countries remained separate political entities. Yeah. As the first monarch to rule the entire island of Great Britain, several assassination attempts were made by Catholic conspirators. One such assassination attempt was the gunpowder plot by Guy Fawkes, who tried to blow up Parliament. 
After a failed colony known as Roanoke, England established a successful colony known as Jamestown, which would eventually evolve into the 13 colonies. At first, expeditions to the New World were mainly driven by religious motives, which were predominantly to convert the natives to their faith. Yeah. But colonies became more profitable, as demand for New World crops like tobacco and sugar increased. British ships also made a monopoly on the transportation of captive African slaves that crossed the Atlantic to the Americas. Okay, okay, now we get to the time of slavery. Slavery. Mad. Well, let me take this back a bit. Okay, I posted it too early. More profitable, okay. as demand for new world crops like tobacco and sugar they spent increased. too much, now they need British money. British ships also made a monopoly on the transportation of captive African slaves that crossed the Atlantic to the Americas. Millions of Africans Hi, were ancestor. shipped in cramped, horrific conditions yeah. to work on brutal Sad. plantations Sad. in the Americas, and essentially became property to their masters. Dark times for, for my people. For 300 years, this practice continued oh. in the British Empire until it was fully abolished in 1833. Was he was he laughing while these Africans was going through a lot of pain? Was was he was he laughing? You see, like back then, yeah, back then, the amount of pain. Yeah, that the whole world was going through was immense, was crazy. But then imagine the pain that the Africans were going through. The, the Africans felt the world had come to an end. We felt that it was over. Our ancestors were like, eh, 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 our world is finishing. And they were running. And the British people came. And all of them, them people on the boat, the white people, they came. They were like, eh, eh, why are you running? And they went over and they got them all and they took them away. Yeah, but yeah, sad, sad. But anyway, it is past, okay? Let's let's learn about the past, okay? And uh, make the future better. This period also saw a wave of plantations in Ireland, where Irish lands were confiscated and given to English and Scottish settlers. Mm. Tensions would rise between Charles the, I and the Parliament. The English did a lot, Following you know. disagreements, conflicts between royal and parliamentary authority within England led to the English Civil War. The country became divided between parliamentarians, known as the Roundheads, mm -hmm. and royalists, known as the Cavaliers. Under Oliver Cromwell and the New Model Army, the Parliamentarians defeated Charles and executed him for treason. Cromwell became Lord Protector and dissolved the monarchy, yeah, Lord Protector. but shortly after his True. death, it was restored under Charles II. Charles II married Catherine of Braganza, and when she arrived from Portugal, she introduced the greatest beverage of all time. Okay. Tea. Tea had been used by China for centuries, but it's arrival- Oh, she introduced tea. Is it? Beverage of all time. Tea. Tea had been used by China for centuries, but its arrival in the 17th century captured the interest of the English aristocracy and soon captivated every other Englishman. In 1685, a Catholic James II. Wait, when making tea, what? When making a cup of tea, one does not put the milk <laughs> in before the water. Captivated every other Englishman. In 1685, a Catholic James II became king in a largely Protestant nation. Mm -hmm. James's daughter Mary and her Dutch husband William were both Protestant, and many nobles unhappy with the Catholic king invited William to become king. William found considerable support when he invaded, and he was soon crowned King William III in what became known as the Glorious Revolution. Although William's supporters dominated the government, there remained a significant following for James II in the Scottish Highlands. Clan MacDonald of Glencoe was one such group who had not been prompt in pledging allegiance to the new monarch. For this reason alone, 38 members of the clan were murdered in what became known as the Massacre of Glencoe. So much blood shed. That's what I've just been hearing. Blood, 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 blood. Nation built yeah, built in the foundation of blood of the ancestors. The pain, the turmoil, the struggle. After Scotland's failed colonial endeavours in Nova Scotia and Panama, and an economic crisis in the 1690s, there was a union between England and Scotland, forming the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Mm -hmm. The House of Stuart had ruled Britain for just over a century, but ended with the death of Queen Anne. Sophia of Hanover was the granddaughter of James I, and her son George became king. Great Britain soon found itself drawn into several European wars, most notable being the War of the Spanish Succession and the Seven Years' War. Victories in these war. wars resulted in territory for the empire, particularly in North America, although it resulted in considerable debt. Okay, in order to make up so that's how they got into North America. 
okay because um these two countries they found common ground they became um, known as the united kingdom of great britain and then they decided to go boom take over north america ah victories in these wars resulted in territory for the empire particularly in north america although it resulted in considerable debt in order to make up for this debt, debt king george iii ordered heavy taxes be placed on the 13 colonies this, among other reasons, culminated into the American War of Independence, mm -hmm. and with financial help from France and Spain, the Americans were victorious. The East India... Ah, France and Spain were like, you know what, let's have Americans defeat the English. Aye, okay, okay. ...company, which was founded by Elizabeth I, had grown rapidly, and even operated its own military and okay. controlled a... ...had grown rapidly. With financial help from France and Spain, the Americans were victorious. The East India Company, which was founded by Elizabeth I, mm -hmm. had grown rapidly, and even operated its own military and controlled a sizable amount of territory. Okay, East India. The company had set up fortified warehouses where they traded with many India rulers, acquiring important luxuries like textiles and spices. One of the most important cities of all was Bengal, as it had a large taxable population. The governor of Bengal, Robert Clive, ordered that the population grow opium to export to China, instead of growing food as it proved to be a great source of income. However, when a f So you see how the drug, the drug market started. You see how the drug market started, yeah? It started by these people saying, you know what, we can make profit. We can make profit. So they decided instead of selling food, yeah, and all these crops that are necessary, which makes less profit, they were like, let's sell drugs, let's sell drugs, because that way we get to make more money. Okay? Wow. Wow. Wait, let's hear that again. The governor of Bengal, Robert Clive, ordered that the population grow opium to export to China, instead mm. of growing food as it proved to be a great source of income. However, when a famine struck, it resulted in the deaths of millions of people. Meanwhile, Captain James Cook arrived at New Zealand and the southeast coast of Australia, although he wasn't the first to discover the area because of past Portuguese and Dutch explorers. Okay. However, unlike the Dutch and Portuguese, Britain claimed it as their new penal colony, known as New South Wales, with the first convicts arriving in 1778. A new threat had emerged from France, French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. Oi, Napoleon Bonaparte! Yep, enter Napoleon. Guys, make sure you subscribe to VC3 Productions for this great video, for this great information, for putting this together. Amazing job, amazing job. Napoleon had come to dominate most of Europe, but Britain's advantage was that she was an island, and the Royal Navy had become a major force at sea. Mm -hmm. Invasion of Britain was near impossible, and in a series of coalitions, Napoleon was defeated. By the end of the Napoleonic Wars, Britain was growing rapidly into a superpower based on their supremacy of naval engineering. Hmm. Furthermore, in Ireland... Naval engineering, thanks to the Vikings, because the Vikings were great at circumnavigating the seas. The Great Famine struck. A disease killing potato plants. Hmm. Ireland, which had merged with Britain, relied heavily on this crop for food but the British government forced Ireland to export what little food they had to other areas. Mm. Without any aid or food, Ireland's population plummeted by half Ooh. due to starvation and emigration to countries like the United States. Mm. Things weren't looking so great in India either, as India was rebelling against company rule. Yeah. The East India Company had employed many Indian soldiers known as Sepoys, okay. who were under the command of British soldiers. These Sepoys grew increasingly unhappy, and a revolt soon occurred, yet it quickly failed due to a lack of unity between Indians. Mm. After the rebellion, the British government took direct control, with Queen Victoria being declared Empress of India. During the 19th She was declared Empress of India? Oh, she actually took over to that point. I never knew that. ...tea between Indians. After the rebellion, the British government took direct control, with Queen Victoria being declared Empress of India. Mm. During the 19th century, the world was forever changed by the Industrial Revolution. Society was transformed by technological advances and increasing mechanisation, and would launch Britain to global dominance. Some of the greatest wow. innovations and inventions were the sewing machine, the fire extinguisher, steam-powered engines and turbines, mm -hmm. the electric motor and photography. 
The telegraph was also a major invention as a message could now be sent from Britain to India in a matter of hours. Wow. The establishment of railways and trains also transformed transport forever. Uh -huh. Instead of travelling yeah. days by horse and carriage, it now only took a matter of hours by train. Wow. Engineering and communication advances not only united the empire, they triggered a manufacturing boom like no other. So the, the British Empire was already becoming great and then technological advancement just came in and boom, made them a global power. Wow, a force to reckon with. Mad. People flocked from rural areas to city centres for jobs. Productivity reached an all-time high, but the consequences of mass migration resulted in extremely cramped and polluted cities. However, with these problems that were generated, it resulted in an improved sewage system. Newcastle focused on shipbuilding, Manchester the cotton industry, Liverpool became a major trading centre, Middlesbrough fixated itself on iron and steel works, mm -hmm. the presence of iron ore, limestone and large coal deposits in the West Midlands and South East Wales prompted the establishment of ironworks, and Scotland boomed in the linen industry. The Victorian era also saw a major change in society, as families from the poorest backgrounds gained access to education although it was much stricter than today's standards. The 1860s wow. also saw the rise of the greatest food combination ever, fish and chips. Yeah, enter fish and chips. Towards the end of the 19th century, European powers came together at the Berlin Conference to divide Africa between them. Mm. A group in South Africa known Dividing as the Boers, Africa who between were originally them. Dutch settlers, proved difficult for the British. The Boers lived in two nations, the Free Orange States and the Republic of Transvaal, and both resisted British rule using guerrilla warfare. Okay. To counter this, the British placed many women and children in their tens of thousands into concentration camps, where many died from starvation oh, and disease. Oh. Britain became a major player in the First World War, and many men Sad. proudly volunteered to serve and protect their country. Okay. The Great War, as it was called, saw the use of new technology, such as dreadnoughts, warplanes, artillery, okay. machine war guns, planes, grenades, chemical weapons, bolt-action rifles, weapons well. and the first use of the tank. Yeah, many the faced Amatan. horrific conditions in the trenches and witnessed gruesome battles. Millions died and many returned home shell-shocked by what they had seen. Mm. The empire reached its territorial height in 1921 mad, after gaining territory mad. from Germany and the crumbling Ottoman Empire. Okay. The empire now ruled over 400 yeah. million people and controlled one wow. quarter of the world's land. One mass. quarter of the but world. The reality actually. was Britain could no longer afford to build bases or ships to defend its empire as it had before 1914. Okay. Ireland finally managed to break away from British rule and formed the Irish Free State, and shortly after became a republic. Okay, the so second that's how world war off. was more brutal and horrific than the first. Yeah, most of Europe had fallen under German Churchill occupation, mm -hmm. and under Prime Minister Winston Churchill, yep, Britain yep. stood strong during the Battle yep, of Britain yep. and the Blitz. Winston Churchill actually saved the Great Britain and saved the world as it is today. Britain were extremely successful at intercepting and decoding enemy communications with the likes of Alan Turing, who cracked the German Enigma code. Okay. The war ended with an Allied victory, but many nations within the Empire felt a desire for independence, uh -huh. and it was clear the Empire was about to break. Yeah. India was one such nation, mm -hmm. who were ready to declare their independence. Yep, yep. Mohandas Gandhi practiced a non-violent approach, and this proved successful, as shortly after India gained independence. Okay, Mahatma Gandhi did it, yeah? The Commonwealth of Nations was fighting. formed to improve relations and economic ties with former colonies. This still remains today, with 53 members united by language, history, culture, and shared values of democracy. Yeah. The British Empire officially ended with Hong Kong, Britain's last colony, being mm -hmm. handed over to China in 1997. The Empire committed many atrocities on many different people imposing their culture and civilization while often wiping out native ones. Yeah. On the other hand, this brought about globalization and the uniting of the modern world. And without such innovations and industrialization, the world might have been a very different place. True. The United Kingdom suffered True. a small economic recession True. in 2008, but has since recovered. It is a multicultural society yeah. with- So this area is South Bank. This is South Bank. Uh, in London. Each region retaining a presence of its history and culture. If you ever visit, look out for the Welsh cake. 
the haggis, the whiskey, haggis. the Chelsea bun, the parmo, the Cumberland sausage, the Yorkshire pudding, yeah, or the Yorkshire Cornish pudding. pasty. The UK remains a member of NATO, United Nations, and the World Trade Organization, yeah, that and uses the pound the currency. Oxford in 2016, a referendum resulted in 51.9% of voters in favour to leave the European Union. That's true. Although the countries within the United Kingdom became divided on the matter, mm -hmm. leading to the many questions of its future unity. Exactly, that's a big question now. Thank you for watching. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Like, wow. subscribe, wow. follow wow. us on Twitter. Support wow. us on Patreon. Amazing Have a video. Good one. Amazing video. Very, very amazing. Very, very informative, guys. I'll just talk to the screen like this. Like, the Great Britain has been involved in the transformation of the world. Without Great Britain, right now the world will have been a very very different place a very very different place very very informative like this this feels like just taking um, a history lesson this is actually a literal history lesson okay wow i mean the empire committed so many atrocities so so many atrocities going to different countries okay imposing their way of life yeah taxing these countries then imposing them to even speak their language guys that's crazy lots of people lost their lives lots of people lost their lives they pillaged all right i mean yeah those were those were negative i mean yeah they would say other countries too tried their own they they tried to failed i know the romans went over as well they did theirs way back in time also as a result of this it brought about globalization it sort of brought the whole world together it made the world also smaller okay by making communication easier transportation way way easier as well um goods being transported between countries made things so much easier but at what cost at the cost of people's lives at the cost of freedom crazy so much to take in so much to take in in 21 minutes so much to take in guys wow oh my days the country is called great britain yeah but the country was built on a lot of blood lots of blood lots of lives were lost and uh, it's crazy i'm just really glad that we're not living uh, in those times again and uh the importance of history is to know our past know where we're coming from and know where we are going to okay that's very 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 important okay guys yeah yeah well uh crazy crazy so so nice to know about how a lot of things came to be about how tea got into the uk as far as i thought tea was originally from the uk but i realized it's actually from originally from china it is from china wow interesting to know that the great britain is such a small country compared to other countries it's a small country but the impact it's had on the world is so immense so so immense so crazy english language which is the national language uh, in the uk yeah is spoken by most of the world most of the world imagine a small nation but the other nations are larger speaking its language why because of the impact it had well thank god those days are gone and now it's just to move forward and see how things can be done better okay but anyway enjoy this video i hope to do more okay guys i hope you like this let me know what you think about this in the comment section it's been your boy shady shady one and only guys go down quickly smash the like button subscribe to my channel give me some love it's gonna be a peace out for me guys more than words can say you are me oh you are the light that shine in my way you are me oh i love you more than words can say you are me oh you are the light that shine in my way you are